so in this set of videos we're going to be taking a look at uh, redox reactions and galvanic cells okay so this is um, the beginning or the first video of our new set of topics which is discussing electrochemistry okay so redox reactions redox reactions are those that involve the exchange of electrons okay there are two parts to a redox reaction oxidation and reduction okay oxidation reactions involve a loss of electrons so for example if we're looking at the oxidation of copper this is going to be copper going to a copper ion plus two electrons okay so we've lost electrons reduction reactions oh sorry so the metal loses electrons reduction reactions are those that involve a gain of electrons okay so for example if we're going to look at the reduction of copper we see that the copper ion gains two electrons to form copper so as we can see this metal ion gains electrons when we look at the activity series those that are more reactive are actually more likely to lose electrons and thus be oxidized and the same applies, like, applies, I guess, for vice versa, where those that are less reactive are more likely to gain electrons and thus more likely to be reduced. Okay? This concept is really important when we, talk to, when we start to talk about um, galvanic cells. Okay. If we look at any reaction between two metals, the more reactive of the two will be oxidized and thus the less reactive will be reduced okay so just keep that in mind okay so galvanic cells okay so galvanic cells actually use re these redox reactions in order to produce electricity they are a type of battery and the driving force of the system is actually its attempt to reach equilibrium okay so a galvanic cell actually looks like this so I'm going to draw a galvanic cell out and I'm going to label all the parts of it so that I guess that's the best way for you guys to understand what it is okay so let's just draw the base of it So, let's label this side negative and this side positive, okay? Because remember, this is a battery, okay? This side is what we call the anode, okay? It is a negative side of the battery. Oxidation occurs here with the atoms in these... This is a metal electrode, okay? So, the metal electrode, okay? So, the atoms um, in this metal electrode are becoming ions okay and these ions come into this solution this other side this positive side is known as the cathode okay reduction occurs here with the ions in this solution so let's say this again is um, a metal electrode okay and there are ions in this solution which gain electrons and become atoms and join this metal electrode Okay, so this is really important. These, this is a solution. These two are both solutions made of metal ions. Okay, so like I said, in each cell we have these ionic solutions and these contain um, the like, metal ions of this electrode. Okay, so we've got this electrode and in this solution we have metal ions of this electrode. Okay. Between these two is a voltmeter, which measures the voltage that's produced. Okay, so this voltage tells us how strong this driving force is. The driving force is electrons moving from the anode to the cathode. 
Okay, so you have a net movement of electrons along this wire from the anode to the cathode. This is logical because the anode is releasing electrons because oxidation is occurring here and the cathode is absorbing electrons because reduction is occurring here. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down, oxidation and reduction. Okay, the salt bridge, okay, so this, this in between here is known as a salt bridge. Okay, now the salt bridge works to exchange charge in order to neutralize the half cells and it also completes the circuit. So as we have electrons moving across here, we have ions moving across the salt bridge, um, carrying charge and in a sense completing the circuit whilst also ensuring that these solutions remain neutral. Okay, so they don't become too charged because we know we have metal ions going into here. So the solutions are becoming more positive. We have metal ions leaving here, becoming more negative. Exchange of ions through the salt bridge. So we have positive ions moving this way to make this positive and make this less positive. Um, and we have a negative ions, I guess, pushing this way to make this um, reduce the positivity here and increase the positivity here. So we keep these two solutions neutral. Okay, and this is this is our galvanic cell. Okay, this is what it is. Okay, we've got two metal electrodes in the solution of each of the I guess the solution of each of these metal electrodes themselves, connected by a voltmeter and a salt bridge. Okay. If we have a galvanic cell uh, made of, for example, zinc and copper, this is how we'd name it. We have zinc, copper, okay? So zinc is actually, makes up the anode because we go from zinc to zinc 2 plus. Um, copper makes up the cathode because we go from copper plus, 2 plus to copper uh, metal, okay? So we, you kind of read this left to right, okay? So the two middle lines indicate the salt bridge, which I guess as the ions move that way over the salt bridge and the single lines represent the phase boundary so what that means is just that this is the metal electrode this is the solution the salt bridge between the two the copper solution the copper electrode okay so that's how you name the galvanic cell okay we need to actually be able to calculate the cell potential of galvanic cells Okay, and this is the voltage that the cell produces. This is dependent on the two metals that are actually used to make the galvanic cell. Each reduction and oxidation reaction that occurs is associated with a particular voltage or a particular potential. Okay, so different metals will produce different potentials. We can take the value of these potentials from the standard potentials list. We are actually provided with this, okay? So you will be provided with the standard potentials list. Okay. So the standard potentials list actually shows um, the potential of for the reduction of a variety of different metals and non-metals, okay? The potential for the oxidation of these metals is just going to be the negative of the reduction potential, okay? This is because oxidation is just the reverse of reaction of reduction. And so the reduction and oxidation potentials for a particular substance are the opposite sign of one another. So they're equal, but just the opposite sign of one another. Okay, that's really important to remember. When a galvanic cell gives no indication of which metal is the anode and which is the cathode, we can work this out by looking at the standard potentials list. Simply. Whichever is higher up the list will be oxidized. Whichever is lower on the list will be reduced. Okay, this makes sense. Whatever's higher up on the list is actually more reactive. It's more likely to lose electrons, so it's more likely to be oxidized. Thus, whatever's lower on the list, less reactive, more likely to gain electrons, thus more likely to be reduced. Okay, when we take the potential of this um, metal that's higher up, remember we always have to get the reverse because it's the oxidation potential we're looking for, not the reduction potential that we've been given. All right, so let's do an example. Let's work out the potential of a cell made using zinc and copper electrodes. Okay, so if we look at our potential list, we actually see that zinc is higher up than copper, so it's going to be oxidized while copper will be reduced. Let's actually write these equations out. So this is what we call our half equations. Okay, so zinc is going to be 
um, oxidized. So we're going to go from zinc to zinc 2 plus, plus 2E. Copper is going to be reduced. So we're going to go from copper 2 plus, plus 2E to copper metal. Okay? We call these equations the half equations. Okay. The value on the potentials list for zinc is minus 0 0.76. Therefore, as we take the negative of this value, we list it as 0 0.76, okay? Copper will have a value of 0 0.34, and that's what it is on the list, so we keep it the same. To find the overall potential, we just add these two potentials together, okay? And we get 1.1 volts, okay? So this is um, the potential of this cell. If we add the two half equations together, we also get um, the overall equation for the cell. Okay, so this is going to be Zn plus Cu2 plus. The so two electrons cancel each other out on either side. Goes to Zn2 plus plus Cu. Okay, this is the overall reaction, um, the overall equation for our galvanic cell. If we get an overall cell with a positive potential, this actually tells us that the reaction between these two is spontaneous. We've got a positive potential here, so we know that this galvanic cell the reaction is going to be spontaneous. It's going to occur on its own without any external input. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.